So remember that the vestibular cochlear nerve serves both the cochlea and the vestibular system. The problems with, uh, if, it, if the cochlea, cochlear innervation coming from the spiral ganglion is, is interrupted in any way, there are two possible outcomes. One is deafness or hard of hearing, and the other is tinnitus. So a negative sign and a positive sign. And those are pretty straightforward. When it comes to the vestibular component, the, the part that is arising from Scarpa's ganglion neurons, primary afferents that reside in Scarpa's ganglion, the problems can be uh, divided into issues with linear acceleration, balance in response to linear acceleration, and balance in response to angular acceleration. Um, and so with problems with linear acceleration, we're going to term disequilibrium a feeling of not being in balance even when one is, say, sitting down um, and, and is, in fact, in balance. Um, and problems of vertigo are, are, are problems with uh, angular acceleration and produce a, a sensation that either the self or, or the surroundings are, are rotating around. So the vestibular, the information from the vestibulum is completely tied into the motor system. The, the vestibulum is driving the motor system so much that the words that we use for balance, you could say that they're sensory or you could say that they're motor. We really don't even have a language to separate how the vestibular uh, perceptions guide our movement. So the vestibular, uh, uh, system is all about um, keeping upright, keeping the postural control, and also about um, moving, moving the eyes. And so the problems that arise from a vestibular, um, uh, from a vestibular sh a schwannoma, for example, that, which is the most common reason why the vestibular uh, nerve is affected, uh, is are, are, the most common symptoms are disequilibrium, vertigo, and accompanying that is nausea. So when we, when we feel as though we're not in balance, we typically feel nausea, and we may, in fact, even vomit. So this is an extremely unpleasant sensation, perception, and we will we'll go into that more um, later. I just want to um, turn to the, to the slides here for a moment. This is a schematic looking down at just the brainstem. The, the um, cerebrum has been removed. So here you have the spinal cord, the medulla, the pons, the midbrain. Here's the cerebellum. And right here coming out are the facial nerve. And then just lateral to the facial nerve is the vestibulocochlear nerve. The, vis the most typical place where a vestibular schwannoma, that used to be called an acoustic neuroma, but is properly, properly called a vestibular schwannoma, the most typical place for that to start is on the vestibular root of the, cranio of the um, eighth cranial nerve. And so the first symptoms tend to be vestibular in nature. If that schwannoma grows, it expands, the next symptoms that are going to occur are going to be hearing. They're going to be loss of hearing and tinnitus. And if it grows even more, it can reach both the abducens, the um, trigeminal, and it may even reach the glossopharyngeal. So this is, um, this is typically uh, a sporadic condition that just happens. It's just a bad luck kind of situation. It happens on one side. One figures it out because of the, the symptoms are not subtle, goes to um, a, a seek medical assistance, and finds a surgeon who's going to going to take it out with skill. And usually the, um, the outcome is very, is very good. Now, there are a group of people that have a, uh, that, that present with bilateral vestibular schwannomas. Now, what's, what's the chance of that? Well, the chance of that occurring just by chance are, is like doesn't happen. So in fact, this is a, uh, the, the cardinal sign of a condition known as um, Van, von Recklinghaus uh, neurofibromatosis. And so this is a disease that has a problem in cell cycle control genes 
that um, are, they, they are mutated and um, these individuals are susceptible to multiple tumors. And in this case, they present often with bilateral vestibular schwannomas. Okay, we are going to go on and wrap up the rest uh, of the cranial nerves in one go. Glossopharyngeal, vagus, spinal accessory, and hypoglossal. <laughs>